to the point where I am now just from the evidence. And you look at, um, you know, talking about how we need to enter this new age and, and the age of Pisces, you know, Jesus rep is represented in the age of Pisces. So ultimately, they, they really lit think the deity of uh, Christ is holding us back from the age of Aquarius. Is that correct? I mean, basically, I mean, they would say it that, uh, you know, that was just uh, that that idea basically needs to get in, that Jesus, his era is ending and a new thing is beginning. And really what that's going to take shape in is more the the people that are still trying to hang on to the old system and preventing this new possible utopia that's dangling on a, a carrot, dangling on a string in front of everybody. Uh, and so that's going to cause the genocide that uh, that is is on the back burner of every channel message that I've ever read is a genocide that's coming. And I think, of course, if the Bible predicts it, that's what I was just saying. I mean, I could, I it can't believe that stuff. You know, Matthew 24, when parents are going to give up uh, you know, their kids to be killed because they believe that they are, you know, they're reporting them like 1984 uh, was reporting them. So, yeah, basically, I, I totally agree that with that. Okay. And then just from a uh, really kind of down-to-earth perspective, very realistic. What I mean, I know you don't come off to me as one of those people who's an ultra-alarmist or anything, but what do you think people should real, realistically, I mean, because I'm pretty, I mean, I know I'm pretty convinced, a lot of the listeners are convinced that, you know, there are going to be hard times ahead and turmoil, you know, for the, the Illuminati to bring about their new world order. What do you think people should do to prepare? I mean, just from your perspective, do you think it should all be spiritual preparation or do you, do you advocate um, some sort of, you know, maybe some survivalist type preparation? Uh, the primary thing for me, and uh, I certainly advocate uh, um, preparing in terms of uh, any prudent means and things like that. But I, I, I am at the point now where I, I have been absolutely, without a doubt, proven that that God is real and listening to me and loves me, and that he, he this is the the main thing. When I f see this stuff happening, my my instinct is like, gosh, I have God. I, 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 don't, I don't need this stuff. I have a God that can do anything. These pe people out here that are going to be hungry and dying, I need to give them my food. I need to go out of my bunker and make them food because I have a way to get more. I have a God. I have some, uh, but they don't. Um, my, to me, it's like a fireman in a burning building trying to go to, to wake up a lot of people to the fact that um, they don't need to be in this alone, that um, that God is real. I think the spiritual development that happens after, you know, a lot of people misunderstand what Christianity is. Christianity isn't just taking on a new belief. It's a supernatural thing that happens to you. Um, your life starts to change. You start to love people that you, and, and want to help people that you couldn't have done on your own power. That love itself is not of you. Uh, the desire to learn about him and the desire to turn away from that bondage of the stuff that was holding you back, the vices and all that stuff it's not a resistance of it necessarily. Uh, it's it's a taking it away from you. Uh, you start to become somebody else, uh, and the re and what you what do you do when you've become this this person that you don't really deserve to be? That you didn't do it on your own. He did it for you. And the best thing you can do at that point, your, your single minded focus is other people need to know about this. Other people need this. And so my my focus is is so little on my personal preparedness. I have a wife, and we have you know, food stored up to, you know, get us through what, uh, you know, a few weeks, a, a month or whatever. And so, you know, Berkey water filter, that kind of thing. But the problem I think with building big bunkers and stuff like that, unless, you know, that's something that you feel strongly that you're being guided to do or whatever, that's fine. I, obviously that's a great thing to do. And, and pe we need people doing that. Um, but ultimately that will just become this, this dark thing in your life. You know, it will be your God in a lot of ways. I mean, it's, it's the thing sustaining you. It's your only hope. It, 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 if somebody comes and tries to take it, you will kill for it. I mean, it's, it becomes this, this terrible dark way to go out, uh, as opposed yeah. to, as opposed to living for something and dying for something. Now I won't say it's all roses being Christianity. In fact, like I just mentioned in, in Matthew 24, Jesus is quite plainly saying, they're going to kill you because of me. I mean, they're going to deliver you up, and they're going to kill you. What's coming is like nothing else that's ever came. He was pretty honest with us. I mean, I, I got to say, but he's also, uh, when you get to know him, he's a good God that loves us, and not only loves us uh, in the next life, but loves us and takes care of us here. 
Yeah, that's important. I mean, just the reason I brought that up was I know me and then obviously a lot of the listeners. It's like when you start to really look into this stuff and you find out the plan of the Illuminati and how absolutely dark and bleak it is, you know, you can kind of get that run to the hills type, you know, feeling, you know, that just want, you know, fight or flight, you know, just trying to just do whatever you can to survive. But ultimately, I think, yeah, it does come down, uh, you know, to faith in, in God. I mean, because, you know, like they say, times are going to get hard. And I really think I found, you know, that saying there's no atheist in, in uh, foxholes. We're going to start seeing that to be more true as things kind of start to deteriorate. People are going to you know, hope you get back to their faith, basically. And, and trust me, th this isn't a, a, a type of pacifism, because if, if, you know, all the things that we're finding out, how scared they are about this power that, that Christians have, the authority that Christ has given them, uh, that's what they're really scared about. That's the weapon that they do fear more than anything. And that's why this genocide is coming, because it's the one, because once they get that out of the way, it, the rest of you guys are going to be evil, easy, easy targets, you know. The Bible calls Christians the salt of the world. We're preventing the inevitable decay of this world in the same way that salt prevents the decay of meat. He's scared to death, Satan, of, of this power. It's the only thing that can stop him. Uh, if you've ever seen, dealt with a demon, that becomes very evident that they are, uh, that they are absolutely terrified of the authority of Christ in a Christian. And they aren't scared of a single other thing. When whatever goes down, goes down, it's going to be one of the darkest, most demonic things uh, in the history of the world. That's what's coming mostly. As, as we talked about at the beginning, this thing has been spiritual from the very beginning. Everything that's been set up has been a spiritual agenda. Right out in the open, it's been a spiritual agenda. It's right under our noses. Uh, there is a general behind this spiritual agenda. And... What are we going to use against a spiritual enemy? Huh? I mean, do we have a weapons that we can use against them? Uh, the real weapon that they're scared of is not, uh, is, is not flesh and blood. And uh, the real weapon is spiritual. So uh, in Ephesians 6, 12 is a good version of that. Pick up your Bible. Check it out. Yeah. Um, I, I have been coming to that same conclusion uh, more and more. It comes down to ultimately a spiritual, uh, spiritual warfare. But um. So as far as uh, things to expect, things to come, I know uh, Russ Didzar talks about um, these sleeper cells, which uh, are, uh, you know, these, the sleepers, the, the black awakening, which is, I mean, if that's not extremely frightening, I, you know, because he, and if people, if you're not familiar with who he is, I, first off, I would check him out. He has some of the just mind-blowing stuff. Uh, if you go to, I believe his website is shatterthedarkness.org. Uh, 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 net. Net, okay, I'm searching it right now. Uh, but yeah, so he, okay, he, what he does is he is actively involved in spiritual warfare. And I can tell you from a personal uh, perspective that it is real. Um, I, and the last time I talked, I won't talk about it too much now, but I was, you know, deeply getting attacked uh, through sleep paralysis and was able to turn that and so many other things in my life around by watching uh, Stop Sleep Paralysis and then going to stopsleepparalysis.org and then ultimately, uh, re you know, resorting to the Bible and calling out to the the uh, deity of of Christ, and then um, anyways, going back to him, what he says is there are all of these sleepers, these uh, trained uh, satanic super soldiers that, and he knows, and he's hearing this from the horse's mouth because he is involved in spiritual warfare, so he's doing a lot of deliverance and exercising demonic entities. So, and uh, basically, he says what's what'll ha happen. Is there will be like a 9/11 going off in every type of city once these uh, people are called upon? Do you uh, do you agree with that? Um, I, I think um, I certainly agree with Russ's uh, research. The the thing about I think the triggers that are inherent in multiples and multiples and how closely tied it is to satanic ritual abuse. Everybody that has satanic ritual, or rather, everybody that has multiple personality disorder, we're talking probably 90-some-odd percent of the cases nowadays, also have satanic ritual abuse. People can have MPD, multiple personality disorder, in a natural way. If they suffer trauma, they can dissociate a particular personality. But what we're talking about is a, a structured uh, system of personalities that were created. Whenever some, there's that going on, the stuff that the Nazis brought over— there's always satanic ritual abuse. Now, in that system, and satanic ritual abuse is, uh, you know, uh, the being brought to rituals. They have, you know, memories of, of rituals, and that's used for programming. It's also used to demonize certain personalities, like assassins, to give them more power and things like that. But the the issue there is, 
that they do have programs that can be that are have triggers and when you get into those programs they're very meticulous they they uh have a job to do at a certain time that seem to be associated with this chaos that's created out of the dust and basically the idea that I, I get from it is they're, they're going to create a chaos that when the dust settles from that um they will be in power uh and they call themselves the soldiers of the antichrist uh so so it's kind of part of this order out of chaos thing it's definitely a possibility in in terms of how it, it could happen overnight type thing uh, or at least be part of it i i have uh i have racked my brain trying to figure out how that um scenario could work in terms of how the media would deal with it be- because i can't think of a, a excuse that the media could have that all across the world everybody starts going crazy unless it was associated with uh what i mentioned earlier the alien thing yeah. because uh, uh, it, i think we were set up with the rockefeller thing to because then Orson Welles and that whole thing when, you know, aliens have landed and people jumped out of windows and killed themselves and acted crazy. I think there's a precedent set in the minds of people that if that happened, there would be just mass craziness and chaos and people going crazy. And a lot of these um, people, uh, as a as Fali, a great Illuminati defector who was a former programmer, detailed, uh, a lot of these people have front altars that are uh that are like you know big in the church and stuff like that or or whatever um so basically what i'm saying is that there could be something like that where they could be blamed on christians going crazy and you know ended up doing all this stuff but i have absolutely no no idea how that could play out but i do agree with them that they seem to have these programs and the other thing about triggering multiples is um you know a common way to trigger them is through you know code words or whatever you call up a certain personality you know let's say they have 30 personalities and you're looking for the assassin personality and you're the handler then you've got a certain trigger it could be well it's probably a number of triggers one would be you know something to do with a word or something but there's also tones they can get a call and it'll be a tone that will call up certain uh, alters and then but anyway, so that's the scary thing is that these that there seems to be an idea that a, a trigger can go out in a different frequency. Like there's, there's a possibility that there's a frequency based trigger that could go out on some kind of line or something like that that would cause this uh, black awakening to happen. But um, don't know. It could be it could be event based. It could be they could tell the personality when you see such and such happen, that is the trigger for this whatever personality to come out and do its program. And um, one thing I want to hit on spiritual warfare is a question, a huge question I've had that I've never really been able to answer. It's a, but it's a pretty straightforward question. Um, so if there, if there's this spiritual warfare, which I've had evidence of in my own life, and you can just see it, um, you know, you can see it within yourself, and you know, also within yourself, you can see it on a grander scale within the world. This, you know, these two opposing forces. Um, but the thing I don't, I can, I can't wrap my mind around is if these demonic entities for one uh, are forced to respond to the deity in the Bible known as uh, Christ. If they're forced to respond to him that means that they know of, uh, of Christ's power but then what's the why are they what's their purpose then because I mean ultimately you know in the Bible obviously you know uh, Yahweh you know is victorious and and so it's like do they really think in spiritual warfare they're gonna win? I mean it just you know I don't understand why it, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that a good example would be in the Bible where uh, the demons would also say, often say stuff to Jesus when he was dealing with them. Nobody had seen any of this stuff happen uh, before, but the demons would also often say stuff. One incident they said, what are you doing? Are you here to torture us before our appointed time? Um, they know it's coming. They know it's coming. And, but they but that was the question to him have you have you come here to torture us before our point in time the i i think that there is a belief as twisted as it is that uh in terms of lucifer uh or satan or whatever that he can win i think that the reason i think that is that um a lot of the things that he does seems to uh, seem like he's trying to win uh i think that there's a there's a few things that you can there's a, like every time that there's like a conditional thing 
that, you know, Christ can't come back until so-and-so or, you know, new prophecy is revealed, he seems to actually attempt to thwart that. As soon as he hears some kind of thing about, like, prophecy, a good example is there's sort of a, a obscure kind of, I mean, basically, I mean, they would say it that, uh, you know, that was just, uh, that that idea basically needs to get in, that Jesus, his era is ending and a new thing is beginning. And really what that's going to take shape in is more the the people that are still trying to hang on to the old system and preventing this is just saying, I mean, I could, I can't believe that stuff. You know, Matthew 24, when parents are going to give up uh, their kids to be killed because they believe that they are, you know, they're reporting them like 1984 uh, was reporting them. So yeah, basically I I totally agree with that. Okay. And then just from a uh, really kind of down to earth person, new possible utopia that's dangling on a, a carrot, dangling on a string in front of everybody. Uh, and so that's going to cause the genocide that uh, that is is on the back burner of every channel message that I've ever read is a genocide that's coming. And I think, of course, if the Bible predicts it, that's what I was to the point where I am now, just from the evidence. And you look at, um, you know, talking about how we need to enter this new age and and the age of Pisces, you know, Jesus rep- is represented in the age of Pisces. So ultimately they, they really lit think. The deity of uh, Christ is holding us back from the age of Aquarius. Is that correct? Back to a very realistic. What I mean, I know you don't come off to me as one of those people who's an ultra alarmist or anything, but what do you think people should real realistically? I mean, because I'm pretty. I mean, I know I'm pretty convinced. A lot of the listeners are convinced that you know there are going to be hard times ahead and turmoil. You know, for the the Illuminati.